Greetings, Pilgrims! Welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage, and today we are back with our menus. Thank you so much for your kind patience. We've been cranking out a lot of stuff behind the scenes, and you are about to get flooded with a lot of content, guys. So, we're going to try to finish up our menus here, wrap up some of the Battle Royale stuff, and we have a ton, a ton of cool content coming. So, for today, we have our menu here, and everything is looking great, but we need to be able to actually switch between our menu items. So that's what we're going to work on today. And I have some good news for you. A little bit of not so good news, but it's not necessarily bad news. It's time for you to practice. That's all it is. So here we have our buttons. And as you can see, when I click between these, we have different options here. And yes, this is all kind of mimicking the Fortnite menu options. So you might notice that when I click on some of these things, there are buttons that appear and some things like the events or these buttons on the sides. I'll show you the reference images I've captured. We are kind of mocking what they have going on. So some of these are just laying out what we will create in the future together. But for today, we're just going to look at creating these buttons up here, which I'll provide all the images. There's even a prefab for you. It's all kinds of awesome for you guys. And I'm going to show you how to hook this stuff up with the options here. And I'll show you the one kind of slight flaw with Unity, but how we can work around it, just a little bit of manual work. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop the scene, take a look at what we got here. So this is my little demo scene here. We got our guys all set up with their post-apocalyptic environment. Very cool. Now, if I open up my main menu, you'll notice that I've got a ton of stuff here. And if I just fully open it, you'll see there is a ton of stuff in here. So don't worry about this. It looks very scary. Oh my God, so much. But we're gonna go over it one step at a time. Don't you worry. So underneath the main menu, we have all these extra objects here. And these objects are just that, they're just blank game objects. But because, remember, we're working with a canvas. So my main FN menu, I've renamed it to, but it should say canvas normally. Underneath that, I just created a blank game object and I called it main menu. And you'll notice I just set the size to 1920 by 1080, just so that it keeps our game resolution going on here. Now I'll go to this and go to 2D. So we can actually see the whole thing. So there's our little world. And up here, this is the whole canvas. And this is just kind of how it displays it. So this is our whole world. And on the main menu, I made this little script, which I'll provide to you, no problem, called Main Menu Handler. And it has two options here. A previous menu, which is just something that it's handling. Don't worry about that. And then starting menu. So all you have to do is put into here which of these you want it to start with. So we're going to start with our lobby through store here, these eight menus. We're gonna start with all of them as being active, meaning this checkbox right here is checked. And then what our script here is gonna do on the main menu is gonna say, okay, I'm gonna get a handle to all of those. They're all active, but then I'm gonna turn them all off except for this one that you wanna start with. Makes sense, right? We don't wanna see the content of all of these overlapped on top of each other. No, that's too messy. We just wanna get rid of everything. We wanna see just the one from there, we'll click the buttons to go to the ones we want to go to. Okay, so here's where you're in luck. Each of these I've already set up for you, and it's got all of this stuff in here. It should We'll look at this in an empty scene in a moment. All of this is already set up, and if you see this top bar, top menu, top bar, bottom bar, just these things here, top menu, you'll see this over and over again, is actually all of these buttons. And if I click on these buttons, you'll see there they are, and I might even be able to show you, yeah, the shape of them. There they are. So there's the button for lobby. There's the button for the battle pass, challenges, events, locker, item shop, career, and store. And each of these has already been set up for you. And essentially what these are is these are just buttons. So when you create a button on your menu, you just right click and say UI, and then up here, button, right there, button, okay? And then it'll look like this. It'll say there's an image and then there's this button script. So for the script, what I've done is I've actually provided you with some images, which are text that I've created with these. I'm not, I don't remember if these are the cutouts or if I actually created these. I think I recreated these because they weren't quite centered. So these guys are all set already with images in place. And there's a button script. And then down here, you see this part, this on click. Right now for the lobby button, because we're on the lobby menu item right here. So the lobby button doesn't do anything. If you click lobby when you're on lobby, you go to lobby, you know, you're still there. You don't do anything. But let me look at the next one, battle pass button. Now this has some stuff here. Whoa, okay, this looks like programming is too much, right? No, it's actually really easy and I'll show you how it works. And unfortunately, I'll show you how it works a lot because Unity kind of dropped the ball a little bit on us here, but it's okay. 
we'll forgive it, we'll move forward. So for each of these buttons, pardon the word, you'll hear it a lot, you'll notice that the tab that we are on, the image will be a different color. So I go to lobby, the image is tinted with this yellowy, orangish, whatever. And if I go to another button, you'll see it's this nice blue, purple, whatever, whatever you call that. I just kind of followed the numbers. There they are. So each one will be colored this color, except for when it is the current or active one, it will be this color. That's another way you can tell which one you need to set nothing here is the one that we're on. So when we're on lobby, the lobby button does nothing. Okay, so what does all this stuff down here do? So I'll use lobby as an example, but we won't keep our changes. So say we were not on lobby and we wanted to go somewhere else. Well, we can tell this button that when you're clicked on click, do something. So I'm gonna click the plus button here. And this says, okay, here, you can call some stuff, cool. One of the things I could do is I can put an object in here and I can just turn the object active or inactive. And that's essentially all we're doing here is we're just going and saying, when I press this button, turn the current thing I'm on off and turn the next thing I wanna go to on. So I can say, okay, I would, if I wasn't already on lobby, say, turn whatever I am off. So let's just pretend, so I'll drag and drop one in there. And then see how this no function lights up. So let's click that, say game object, and then down here, set active boolean. A boolean is true or false. So I'm saying when I click the lobby object, which is this right here that I just dragged over, go ahead and take that game objects dot set active property and set it to false, turn it off. So that's the same thing as me going up here and going and turning it off, okay? Now, what we would then do is say, I wanna turn the thing I'm on off, which we just did. Then I'm gonna hit the little plus button to do another thing. And then I would say, and this won't work because I'm doing the same one twice, but then I would drop this down here and say, okay, now go to this other game object. And then I just check the box now to say, turn this one on, okay? Now, these don't make sense because this is lobby twice, so let's get rid of that. But if I go to the battle pass button, you'll notice on the lobby tab, right here, lobby, when I press the battle pass button, what do I want it to do? I want it to go to the battle pass tab, this thing here, and I want to turn lobby off. And that's essentially all it does. Now this is the quote unquote bad part is, there's a ton of these, because there's eight of these, there are also eight possibilities for each one because each one you can go to seven other tabs, right? So it gets to be a lot. See, if I start to expand these and just expand only the top menu ones, right? So under challenges, here's the top menu. Under events, here's the top menu. Look at how many buttons there are now, right? Well, the good news is I've already set up the whole structure for you. The bad news is I tried to save this as a prefab for you, but it actually doesn't keep the on-click events. Those are not stored in a prefab. There is a way to script it, but it's a little bit complicated, a little bit messy, and right now we don't have the time for that. But So you have to do it manually, but it's not a big deal. But it's a lot of good practice for you to make sure that the whole structure is lined up. So with everything set and with the lobby reset, if I hit play, let's take a look. So when it starts up, the lobby is the first one because if I go to my main menu thing, I told it show lobby and it turned off all the other ones. So if I close these up a bit, it's really hard to tell on the video, but the lobby is a little bit bolder, which means that it's the one that's active, and these other ones are turned off. And you will be able to, if you look carefully, which it might not show up on the video, you'll be able to see these change as I do this. So here in the scene, if I click Battle Pass, lobby is now disabled. See, I have lobby selected and it is disabled. If I go to Battle Pass, you'll see that it is enabled. And if I go to the rest of these, they're all disabled, or set as is active false is the correct terminology. So right now, Battle Pass is the only one that is active. Now if I click on Challenges, you'll notice Battle Pass went away, Challenges is now up. Events, and you see here's some prototyping I'm doing for some of the future stuff. Then we go to Locker, Item Shop, Career, Store. I can bounce around to any button and it works just fine. You'll notice that some of them have the top and bar, bottom bar, we haven't put that on all of them yet. Some don't, some have different things. They're all in various states of completeness, but lobby is probably the most complete so far. But it proves that the buttons work. So, what does that mean for you guys? So let's go ahead and save this scene, and I'm gonna go to a new scene. Brand new scene, don't worry about all of this craziness. This is just uh, uh, some pro builder stuff, all that, You don't, just ignore it. 
So now, we're in a brand new scene, and you've downloaded the pack of stuff from the, today's episode. You'll have this game object here. If I just drag and drop this game object into the world, and go to my main camera, and I'm going to set its position to 0, 0, 0, and hit play. And lighting not being a thing, you have to change that a little bit. Here you go. So this is a brand new scene. I've set up nothing. I just drag and drop an object in here, and all of this should, in theory, work, and it's not. Why is it not working? Well, like I mentioned, the, the on-click events don't come with it. So let's go to this and go, okay, well, what does that mean for us? Let's expand this. Main menu, lobby, and our top menu. So if I click on my lobby button, that's fine because nothing should happen when I click on lobby button for lobby. But if I click on battle pass, oh, battle pass is working. How come it kept them now? <laughs> It told me that they weren't working. Well, maybe it just worked for those. Let's take a look here. Top menu. Top menu. Looks like it's working. Interesting. So they're working now. I think it's the the locker. Now I'll put that on top. Okay. Well, hey, maybe we have some great news for you guys. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. So they should be working now. <clears throat> can't click anything so why is that so huh. I'll have to work that out for you guys before I push up the final for here but typically when I did this on another scene it did not bring forward anything so maybe there was an update between my versions of unity or something for you I'm currently using 2018.2.5 f1 for the episodes here so I don't know if that makes a difference but each of these should not really be working, and it seems to be that it is working, except that the buttons aren't able to be pressed. So I'm gonna look into that, and I'll figure that out for you, but just in case you have to do it yourself, it's not a bad thing because you'll definitely get some experience with it. So for each of these buttons, all you have to do is just like we did, you're gonna click the plus here, and you're gonna tell it, just think to yourself, what tab am I on? What button am I pressing? Where do I wanna go from here? And where do I want to go to? So I want to go to lobby when I press the lobby button when I'm not on lobby. And I want to turn off what I'm currently on. And that should work for you. So I'm going to figure out why mine are not working. But one other thing I wanted to show you that I forgot to mention last time. So I apologize. And it will be in today's download stuff. So let's go back to our lobby scene. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off everything else just so we can take a look at it. Boop. Okay. So our lobby scene is here. And our visuals, this is where we have our cool little visuals in our little world down here, right? Very cool. So now if I hit play, it should just show me lobby. Yeah. So one of the things that I included in the download was some of these graphics. And I'll make sure to put as much of this in, in there as I can. Um, let me know if anything's missing, please. But I did forget to mention that I included this in the project, so I'll include it in the download. But I made a little Photoshop thing to allow you to make your own custom, you know, uh, I don't know what you call this, it's like a seal, like a crest, whatever you call it. So I did create a thing for that. So let me show you that really quick. So here it is. So I called it player banner and underscore make. So this is a common thing I do with Photoshop stuff if I wanna make a file where this is the file I open up to churn out and make a bunch of things. This is the nomenclature I give it. And so I've got it all set up for you here. So you just open up the shield, there's a logo, and then there's the frames and the gradients and everything. This is all set up. And if I just hide the, the logo, it takes away the logo. For me, cats, I like cats. There you go. So let's create a new layer. And all you have to do is create a new layer under the logo thing here. And then anything you want in here, anything at all. So if I go to the custom shape tool, let me just pick a custom shape. Let's do a rabbit. And I'm gonna make it white, drag it out. Just make sure I put it where I wanna put it. Come on, it's having trouble, it's fighting me. Oh, that's right. I was I was doing lettering last. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I got to change this. I was doing some lettering, so let's put it to this. There we go. So this is an actual rabbit. There you go. And there you go. You got your rabbit. So then you can add whatever effects to this you want. If you want to put drop drop shadows, whatever. I left it just alone because that's kind of the best way that it looked with the sample following our examples of Fortnite. So I just kind of left that there. But you can create whatever you want. So now you can have any animal, any shape, and it doesn't even have to be one of these smart shapes. You can just click here and say, paintbrush, you know, let's let's create whatever. We'll do a 
do a big old smiley face, you know? There you go. <laughs> so whatever you want in here, and then each layer can just be under your logos, you can save them out. So then whatever whatever you've got going on, you just save it off of here. And what you do is save as, do control shift S or save as, and then call it whatever you want. I would recommend a PNG file and then save it into your structure here. So here's all the other images. Let's see, there's the current player banner. You can rename it player banner there. And then if you do rename it there, so let's say we do that. So let's go and do the, do the rabbit, right? So I will save this as the PSD, but then do a save as, do a PNG. And then if I just rename it, or save over it rather, right there. Boom, this is the cool thing about Unity, is now it should be done, if I go back in here, yep, we now have a rabbit here. So, didn't have to change it really, didn't have to do anything inside of Unity, it's still pointing to the same file, and when it points to that same file, we're able to just kind of update it to our liking. So there you go guys, so I'm gonna provide you with as much of this stuff as I can. I will look into why suddenly it seems like it's working, but it's not. <laughs> it should definitely be working for you, but guaranteed, you go and you create from scratch, if you have to create some of these top menu buttons and you just put them in here, it will work. It'll flip back and forth for you. I think I have something layering on top of everything. Might even be maybe this reference image. I don't know, I'll, I'll take a look at that. Something is blocking my mouse clicks and I'll figure out what that is. But in the meantime, you guys should be all set to just create your own objects here, create your buttons. Remember, it's right click, UI, button, right there. And you'll be able to just change the colors here, apply your, your images, and then just click plus here and you've got it. You've got it all set. You click and drag over here, whatever you want to interact with. It's a really simple way to create a simple menu with no coding. We've done zero programming for this and I'm going to provide you the one script which just does some handy dandy stuff to kind of close other things down, but with no coding, basically, you've created your own menu. So good job, guys. Thank you so much for joining me this week. As, again, thank you so much for sticking with me. We've got so much stuff coming. There's so many great new subscribers. It's just been blowing up. I thank you so much for your kind time and the support, and I'm so excited for this to keep going, and it's just going to get bigger and better. So stay tuned. Keep a sharp eye. And as always, guys, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.